So let's continue with our build-up to the November off-cycle governorship elections in Bayosa, Imo and Kogi State. Well, last night on the program, uh, we spoke with the governorship candidate of the African Democratic Congress, ADC, Honorable Leke Abejide, and he spoke on a wide range of issues from his campaigns to the security situation in the state and the general state of affairs in Kogi State. Just barely weeks uh, to that election, we're going to be focusing on the issues. And tonight, we'll hear from the government uh, of Governor Yaya Bello on some of the issues raised uh, by Honorable Abidjidi. We're joined on the program by uh, Mr. Kingsley Fanwo, who is a commissioner for information in the state. He joins us uh, virtually on the program uh, from Lokoja. It's good to have you on the program, Mr. Fanwo. Thank you very much, my brother. Uh, let's begin and with... Walt. Right, let's begin with the obvious one. Few months, a few weeks uh, to go to the election, but few months to go for your principal. And he's hoping to have someone who has served in his government take over from him. Uh, how are the people of the state receiving that to begin with? They have been satisfied with the performance of the governor. We came prepared, we knew what we were coming for, and we set what we call the thematic areas. Uh, that we want to use to address and alleviate uh, the poverty of the people of Kogi State. And we looked at the issue of education, healthcare, uh, infrastructural development, civil service reforms, and all of that. We've been able to deliver on that mandate. That was what won him the second, his second term in 2019, and also gave the party massive victory in February and March 2023. So we are very confident that the people are satisfied with his performance as governor and they will continue uh, to keep faith with his party. So let's talk about the issues raised uh, by the ADC candidate, some of them. And first is the court order that was given that uh, he should not be arrested. Uh, and I imagine that you received that as well. And he spoke about it, talked about uh, some of the issues playing out in this state. And I wonder uh, what the government's response is to that court order in particular. Yeah, let me say that uh, no one is uh, trying to arrest any of the candidates uh, running for election. It is their fundamental right to run for election, to aspire to positions and all of that. So no one is after him. Uh, we don't know why he's running here as Kelta that he should not be arrested. Uh, be that as it may, even if you get a court order, if you commit any crime, you will be arrested. So the court order does not exclude that. So what we will advise them is to ensure that they play according to the rule, play by the rule, ensure that they don't violate the electoral law and the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. If they violate any of those rules, they will definitely uh, be asked questions by law enforcement uh, agents. So uh, for me, it, it was um, an unnecessary and futile exercise by that candidate. Well, the court uh, gave a ruling on that. I imagine that the court considered it uh, worth the while. But one of the other issues he raised uh, is about development in the state. And he mentioned that, I mean, even where you're from is not far from uh, where he's from. And he talked about the roads in his constituency, that roads have not been constructed, that the only road, a major road there, was constructed by him. Speaking to that particular point, what do you have to say? I would advise him to speak less on some of these public policies because the more he speaks to the people, the more they get to understand his level of understanding and knowledge about how governance is uh, wrong. Uh, we know him to be a successful businessman, but you know the business world is quite different from bureaucracy. And he needs to understand and have proper understanding of the state that he's aspiring to govern. The road he's talking about is a federal road and the governor has been lobbying the federal government for the past seven years for that road. It is now that we are having a lot of hope because the current Minister of Works has promised to attend to that road. It is not under the purview of the state government to be able to fix such roads. The one we have the right and the jurisdiction to fix, we fixed. He has not talked about the township road in Kaba. He has not talked about the township roads in Okene, in Nampa. He has not talked about the road that emanate, that starts from uh, and run 56 kilometers all the way to either. He's not talking about all these roads. We are fixing the roads that are under uh, the purview and jurisdiction of the state to fix. That road is a federal 
uh, government role. It is also an indictment on him as representative of the people for failing to be able to lobby the federal government through the Ministry of Works as the representative of the people that have been affected by that role. That is a failure on his part. You cannot take your failure and put it on another person. He should commend the governor for what the governor has been able to do on the state roads. Another major point he made is about salaries. And it, it's been a major talking point, perhaps a sour point, uh, from percentage payment at some point. Uh, some people were even saying, well, they had not gotten their payment. And he made reference to a certain grade, grade level in the civil service and how much that grade earns. And I'd like you to speak to the governor's performance in terms of salaries and wages. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, this has been a recurring issue uh, for the past few years. When we were having the staff verification exercise, we decided to momentarily stop the payment of salaries. That is logical. That is native wisdom. If you are fixing um, a leaking pipe in your room, you cannot switch on your tap. So we switched over that time to be able to uh, mend it, which we did. And as of today, we are not owing a, uh, as far as the state government is concerned. And I can say the same of the local government salaries. I've always been saying that it is not my responsibility to talk about local government salaries. But since these questions keep coming, I've also gone into uh, a lot of research to be able to get some of these facts out. Let me give you the statistics. We have a neighboring state here. I will not want to mention the name uh, of the state. It's in the southwest, starting with um, O, and it's our neighbor in Kogi State. Their population is 5.3 million, and they have 3,125 schools. They have 6,984 working in their suburb. Kogi, with a population of 4.4, .4, has 2,759 fewer schools compared to that neighboring state. And we have 15,154 staff working on that survey. You know, that is, that is quite scandalous. It shows that the previous administrations kept on overloading the payroll at the detriment of development at the grassroots. And that's, that's quite unfortunate. Let me also give you this. Let me also give you these statistics. You know, Kogi with um, a local government staff strength of 32,156, is paying, the gross pay is 2.3 billion per month. Now, there is a G state in the north, a state starting with G. They have 34,000 staff strength, and the gross pay is 1.375 billion. That tells you that the salary scale of Kogi state is higher, far higher than most of States so around. Why, why has it I taken it long? Covering about six states. And right. So why has it taken it? Yeah. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Fowler. So why has it taken so long uh, to resolve these issues? I mean, this is the second term uh, for Governor Yaya Bello ends in a few months, and percentage salary still persists. Why is it taking so long? It's not. He, he didn't start uh, percentage salaries at the local government level, and if you check. More than 30 states in this country are paying percentages. I'm just giving you the reason why the local government would have to pay percentages. They've been able to overload the payroll. I just gave you the statistics. And even at that percentage, what they are earning is far higher than what they were earning before he came into office. Before he came into office, we we're talking about 15, 20% to local government staff. One of the spokespersons of one of the candidates came here, uh, uh, the spokesperson to the governorship candidate of the SDP, Farouk Adejo. He was a former local government chairman in Olama Boro local government area. And for three years, he did not pay, he did not pay 100%, not a single month. And he's coming here now to complain that local government are not paying full salaries. How will they pay full salaries when they are overloaded the payroll with so much staff that were not needed. Some local government with two functional vehicles are having 23 drivers. So how are they going to be able to deal with that? And that's why I've given you the statistics that right. even at that, 
Kogi is still one of the highest paying states well, in the Fowl, Federation today. So we have to anchor fact. soon. But, but i like you to speak to this point. Uh, there, there are those who say that, well, the candidature of Mr. Uh, Osmano Dodo is essentially Governor Yaya Bello trying to perpetrate himself in government. A third term, they have said. And they say, well, they want to hear more. Uh, from Mr. Odo, they want to have him do interviews like this so they can interrogate the issues. And I wonder, what would you say to that as we wind down? Is he available to it, be interrogated on these issues, grant interviews like you're doing now? Uh, let, me, let, me, let me clarify this before I answer that. You know, some of these things they are saying about is because they don't even have the knowledge of the state they want to govern. Our advice that... When you want to govern a state, you need to have a proper understanding. If you don't understand uh, where you are, definitely you will not get anywhere. So they need to properly understand the state. Uh, as far as I am concerned, and as far as I know, and I know a lot about it, Ahmed Usman Dodo is not related in any way to the governor. And when you are talking about a third term, I, I don't know what it means. But, you know, he has come out to say he's going to consolidate on the achievements of the governor, and he's going to continue with some of the policies that have brought uh, some of the best infrastructure into the state today. Nobody right. will want to depart from a quality, a quality policy that has done that. As right. to whether uh, Usman Ahmed Odudo will be prepared to come here, I, I can assure you we've released uh, the list of our campaign council today. Uh, it will be inaugurated tomorrow, and the campaign is being led by the Honorable Minister uh, for Steel Development, right. uh, Honorable Minister Prince Shaibu Audu. So we are ready. When it is time for him to talk, he will talk. At this time, well, it will be, it will be good to have and when you that walk, conversation when and you interrogate walk, the issues. You, walk, you don't talk. You allow people right. to do the talking for you. But when you are ready to talk, you come out and talk. And, and well, I we'll have show to. You that it's going to uh, we have to anchor at this point. Mr. Fan, well, clearly we have days uh, to the election. I will still interrogate these issues. But we'd like to thank you, uh, Mr. Kingsley Fan, who is the Commissioner for Information Kogi State. Thank you for your time on the program. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.